Hello, everyone, and welcome today to Retro Tech. I have a special episode. We're going to be working on a series now where we're going to go through and restore a JVC consumer CRT. This is going to be one of the top end best CRTs that you could get that's a consumer grade in the United States. The one we're going to be working on specifically is the AV36D501. And surprisingly, even to this day, JVC still has the information on this television directly on their website. So if you Google this television, you'll find a lot of information here still available on it. Uh, it says 800 lines of horizontal resolution. Now, I've, I've seen other documentation. It says 750. So it's a high line CRT, 36 inch diagonal shadow mask, dark tinted picture tube with high definition audio. And it also supports every great uh, input that is for analog video, like a component input. It has two AV inputs in the rear and one in the front. And then there's also S video on there. So one of the big things to look at here, though, is the weight of this television. It's right at 150 pounds. And it is a, just like that you would think very, very heavy. So today we're gonna to go through and I wanna show you the specific one that I've had for a while now. And you might have seen a couple of videos I've done on this one in the past, but today we're gonna to go through and start actually tearing it apart and restoring it. Now this one I have is right on 20 years old and again, a real beauty. And I wanted to start by showing you some of the uh, current situation on the TV so we could look at how it looks right now um, and because honestly it doesn't look bad at all there's not even uh, any troubles with it at all it has a very good looking screen as is um, i do hope we can get it to look a little bit better but i wanted to give you guys an idea of where we are starting with i've got a super nintendo hooked up with the 240p test suite from artemio and i want to show you a couple of test patterns right off to begin with here. The first one is this crosshatch style pattern. You could still see a little bit of uh, issues in the corner, but to be honest with you, it's not really bad. I mean, there's not a whole lot of problems with even the calibration on this as it sits today. Uh, the screen is very linear. Circles look very nice. So that tells me that the capacitors in it are probably still pretty good because if there was a problem and one of them was failing, you'd notice some troubles. But there is some problems in a couple of the corners that I wanna show you specifically up here in the top left-hand corner, we've got some convergence problems. I shouldn't have the separation to this extreme between the red, green, and blue there. So that's something we hope to work on. Now, I doubt that's a cap issue. It's probably more of a magnetism issue, but we'll see if we can get any improvement off this picture. Um, once we recap it, so I just wanted to show you that everything works fine. All the color guns work fine. Similarly, if you were to find a television like this and it was in really good condition, I mean, even with the convergence in the two corners that I'm pointing out here, um, you may still get it and it, it looks great, you know, but uh, that doesn't mean that you wouldn't want to future proof it. And so as I go through this process, I was, you know, I, I'm going to go through everything pretty much in a lot of details. So that way, if you wanna get in here and do something like this uh, to a CRT that you like, that you can you can have an opportunity to maybe do it and um, just use this kind of as a guide as to how you would go through and um, refurbish or future-proof your CRT. So this one, again, is 150 pounds. It's very difficult to get around and work around as, as one person, but I still have done it and I'm gonna be doing it here. Uh, let's take a closer look now at the inputs real quickly. There's the two inputs that are AV and S video. And then under that, you've got the component video for input two, and that is switchable. So you do have to go through the main menu to switch that back and forth. And then we're just gonna go ahead now and start taking it apart. And the nice thing about these higher end CRTs is that 
the companies marked them with nice little arrows generally where you need to get a screw out. Most of the time it's a Phillips head screw. So just go around the entire CRT and make sure that you get every single screw that you see that has an arrow next to it and double check, make sure you get them all. And then you most of the time be able to pull the shell off of a CRT. Now this one, uh, I wasn't really sure about because I had never opened it. This is the very first time I've opened it. You could tell it's been in my garage. It's not even been in my house. It's it's very filthy. Um, so we'll get into a little bit more on where I got this. I, I originally bought this from a bait shop in Florida, if you can believe it or not, when I was on vacation two years ago, maybe. And I just looked on the ground and saw the largest CRT and a guy was like, you yeah, I'll sell it to you. So I paid him $50, so it might be crazy, but then I had to get it from Tampa up to Tennessee, where I live, so I had to get some help uh, from my family while they were down there. They had to throw this in the back of their minivan and drive it back for me, but I, I mean, this is why it's been in my garage. Just look at this is the dirtiest, most disgusting CRT that I've ever opened and if it wasn't such a rare CRT and one that I wanted to refurbish, I probably wouldn't even work on it. It's so disgusting. I mean, you get in here and you could tell right away that whoever owned it before, the guy was a smoker because it's got not only a film of dust, but a disgusting layer of like soot that you might find in a chimney. And that soot is just on top of the dust and caked on top of each other and it's extremely disgusting and it's never been cleaned in here before so it was just one of the grossest crts you've ever worked on uh where you are going through right now and discharging the crt i want you to see something because i get a questions about this a lot i'm hooking up to a ground loop right here this large crt has a it's got like a spring on it but that's actually tied into the corners and into the major ground loop and that that's connected to another ground cable that actually goes in here and connects to the main chassis and up through everything is grounded to itself that way so that's just a, a cable around it for easy access so i'm hooking right into that if you had alligator clips you just clip onto there and you get in here with your discharge tool and actually just you know, poke under the anode cap, pull up the anode cap and, and tap that little metal area that you see to begin with. And then you can actually push that metal clip in and, and get it out. And then just tap the anode ring right there on the back of the tube. So you don't want to just slam your tool in there and scrape the back of the tube. That That's not really good. You want to avoid trying to damage it. There's a quick look at the tube model. But I just wanted to show you another close-up of how disgusting even the yoke is and the back of the tube. It looks like, you know, looking under a old vehicle where you're changing the oil or something. It's just one of the grossest, again, things. It, it really kind of makes me a little squeamish just watching it and looking at it. Look at the flyback cable. It has a good solid three... I don't know, millimeters of just soot and nastiness all around it. So it's going to need a lot of cleaning, and that's what we're going to start with next. I'm going to pull the whole chassis out as long, along with the neck board. I'm just going to get it out of the way to begin with, and we'll see a closer look at this uh, board and, and how just filthy it is to begin with. And... Uh, just one of the reasons, again, to always check uh, and see what the condition is inside your CRT. Because honestly, after a while, this could become a fire hazard where just this dust is so thick that uh, something happens, it, uh, something heats up and fails. You know, There's going to be a couple of resistors I'll show you later on and that just get it up to an incredibly high temperature. And this stuff could eventually settle down on there, uh, ignite maybe, and it's just all in all disgusting. And it, it's a good reason to you know, always look inside your CRT, even if you're not going to recap it. You're not going to hurt it by doing this, just taking it apart 
and cleaning it to begin with because that m- amount of soot is not good. It's it's a wonder that there wasn't any failure after 20 years for this CRT and how much soot and just buildup there was in it. And frankly, I'm glad that I never brought it inside my house. I could tell it smelt bad a little bit when I got it because I couldn't tell when I smelt it when it was in the bait shop. You know, it's in the middle of a bait shop. So here's a look. I took it outside. I'm just going to, again, if you're squeamish, you might want to look away for the next 30 seconds. But I want you to see just the condition. I haven't even started cleaning it at all. There's an intense amount of buildup on the chips, on the capacitors, on the tuner here. There's even some rust built up that I want to make sure I clean all that area off, the chips, the board. It was covered, and it's not, again, a just light dust that you can sweep off easy or blow off. It is a soot-style dirt that is stuck onto it, almost like with a mini type of adhesive, it feels like. So this is really going to have to be intensely cleaned, and uh, the plan is to replace every capacitor that you see on all these boards for this CRT, but I'm not doing any of that before we clean it. Uh, Look at the ICs. These are extremely high temperature areas over here next to the flyback, and it just, ugh, that's, that's what's inside a lot of these old CRTs. All right, so I'm going to start by taking this back in my shop and disassembling the boards to kind of analyze things a little bit closer as well as get into these areas and start cleaning. I'll show you how I'm going to begin cleaning because this is going to be a couple stage process of cleaning it more than once it's got so much soot on it and i'm not even decided yet what the final cleaning is going to be on it but i start with taking a brush now i know a lot of people are going to be like you need to use the protective static brush but i am using a horsehair brush that's non-conductive at all so i couldn't i mean this would have taken some really heavy duty brushes that i didn't have available so i was just using what i had and without ordering extra tools I've had a lot of, I've had never had troubles using just this horsehair brush. But if you look, look behind the board over here and the amount of just soot that's piled up in between the capacitors that's coming off the back here and just hunks and gunks. And again, this is the kind of stuff that even when I go through here and do this, it's not going to be nearly enough to get all that off. Now, I do thankfully have a full on air compressor. So the next step is going to be blowing as much of that soot and nastiness out of every little cranny and uh, try to get out from clean around the chips and all the Molex connectors and you know even the backs of the boards. And I do the same with the other boards. These are video input board and the tuner and picture and picture board. Because again, I'm repairing and re- refurbishing this whole thing entirely to see if we could get every inch of uh, performance back out of this. It, it Maybe even a little bit more because some of the capacitors I'm going to be upgrading. And I'll kind of walk through that when I get started with the capacitor kits and how I worked th- around you know, developing the capacitor kit for this uh, particular television. And so back inside, and I've got the chassis here, and I just wanted to show you. I've taken a towel, just a paper towel, with a little bit of water on it. And just rubbing that on the <laughs> cable to the anode. And, oh, man, I just, you know, like, again, it's one of the grossest things I've ever seen. So don't be afraid if you see that and you've disassembled the thing to this point. There's really no danger in getting it there and cleaning it. You're not going to shock yourself at any point. Uh, thankfully, it's already discharged. All the energy's out of this. So it's not, again, a problem to go in here and thoroughly rub down a lot of this because there's really no other easy way to get at least that initial outer layer of the dark nasty soot off of there and um just again it's a it's surprising to me that that this television didn't have any kind of issues when i was using it because it, it just didn't seem to have any problems except for again it did stink sometimes so the rest of this shell I had to clean outside. Again, I didn't even really want to touch it, but it's fine to take this plastic and just hose it off 
that's what I did. I just took it out there and just hosed it straight off. And just look again at the levels of soot. You could tell where you know you'd sit in front of the television or areas where the um, air was flowing in, and it would just be layered with soot from cigarettes and from a bait shop. And uh, I just remember this guy would sit around in the bait shop, and he wasn't actually using this television. He had a new flat screen in there, and he didn't. He doesn't even smoke now, which is crazy. Uh, because I've been going to the bait shop for like five years. It's right down the street from this place where I generally go to get um, bait and vacation in area in Tampa. And he uh, he just had it one day sitting on the floor in the middle of his his bait shop. And I asked him, and again, I just bought it from him. And he, again, he didn't smoke. He just said that he wanted to get 50 bucks out of it. And I just, okay, because I'm a sucker for CRTs, I guess. But I had to do the same thing uh, with the brush on the inside of this CRT tube. Again, it just look at the amount of dust that's coming off of this. The inside, there's no easy way to do this. I couldn't start by just blowing it off everywhere because it would have gotten all over the place and made a big, huge mess. It wouldn't have been very effective. But the brush, brush is soft, and it gets in nicely around the yoke. And just look at this yoke. I mean, look at the after. That's how much soot. And look again up here where the coil on the yoke is it's just lined in sooty tobacco dust so there's no easy way to get that off uh, this is really the safest is to go all indiana jones style an archaeologist you know uh, jurassic park and slowly brush that dust off because of this black area on the back of these CRT tubes is a special paint that's been applied to the exterior of the tube to avoid back reflection so you can't see through the tube when you're like watching something. If that paint wasn't there, you'd possibly be able to see straight through the tube translucently a little bit. So you have to be extremely careful not to disturb that 20 year old paint on the back of there so I, I started with the brush, and then I took a very soft old T-shirt and just sprayed Windex on it and rubbed the rest of the inside down. And this is just the piled up soot at the bottom here. Very thick, very disgusting. Again, from everything now has been brushed off those top layers to the bottom. I have to remove all the cables and the speakers and stuff and really get in there and just clean now. i brushing it, and then I did continue to wipe it down more with hand wiping it, I mean, for probably another 30 minutes. And this is how good I got it afterwards. I mean, just a huge amount of difference. Sparkling clean now. Um, I went in there and I had to get in there with those brushes. I, I had to pull the speakers out because I was afraid around those speakers there would have been built up soot and you could have probably gone and sniffed in there and smelt smoke even if I wouldn't have cleaned it. So I want to take a look at the yoke and just show you how much different it looks now. You can see the green in the copper. There's actually a green uh, layer of protective almost plastic around there that I had not seen before. Uh, but this is the build out on the JVCD series, just a beautiful tube. And now you can pretty much eat off of it after I've cleaned it. Uh, I really wouldn't recommend that yet, but uh, still up here at the top of the CRT, I will clean around that a little bit more, and I've got some new fresh dielectric grease we'll be applying to that later on when we actually finish the restoration and re you know, put everything back together. Uh, that's one thing that we will be cleaning a little bit more. But every other area has been swept out, and the best way I was able to get rid of a lot of that soot at the bottom was just to use a shop vac and vacuum it out. But that's how I cleaned the shell and the tube. And then uh, you know, going forward, we're going to be looking at the capacitors. Now, this is the cleaned up board. This is what it looks like now. But I'm going to show you in the next video how to get the board out of the plastic and separate it out fully. We're going to still leave the neck board attached. And then... I'm going to remove every single capacitor on this board that's electrolytic and got a positive and negative on it and every one on the rest of these boards. It came to a total of 157 different caps. And I'm going to show you the process of how I made my cap kit, which was all had to be done by hand. 
there wasn't actually a, uh, a part list for this monitor. I found a lot of documentation on it and servicing and how it worked and, and schematics, but there wasn't actually a part list. So I had to go through myself and l manually record every single capacitor off these boards. I had to write it down. I had to write the position, which is like a C and then a number. And then I had to write the value of the capacitor. And then um, I had to record all that individually. And as I did that, I marked each capacitor after I recorded it with a tick from a Sharpie. So I knew I had recorded it. That's what it looks like here, why you see me with the ticks on the tops of these capacitors. And then I had to manually write this down. But I'll show you in the next video too how I broke that down into an order sheet. And again, so you get the 157 caps, but it makes it a little bit easier because, and then I'll show you which caps you can upgrade. And that's all going to come in the next video, folks. So look, I, I'm getting, my name is Steve. Is this your, if this is your first time on the channel and you've stayed to this point in the video, I really appreciate you coming and watching the video today. And I uh, think that you should subscribe and check out the rest of the playlist on the CRT as it comes out, because it's going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully everything will go well because as of the time I'm filming this, I'm waiting uh, for the capacitor kit to arrive in the mail and we'll get to see, you know, the after effects of uh, how much the screen has improved or if it hasn't improved at all. But I, I have a good feeling that it will. And thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Retro Tech and uh, have a great evening.